yesterday, we could see probably take until about nine o'clock to get it through the entire metro area. So these are serious. This is with the cold front. This is kind of what we were worried about, a second line of storms and they are developing. We'll keep it posted at the bottom of the screen with all the warnings, but these are new. Again, Allegheny County in Maryland, Frederick County, Virginia, Page, Shenandoah, Warren County in Virginia, and then Hampshire and Morgan County, West Virginia until 645. Take this, take this seriously, and if you're in places like Hagerstown and Martinsburg and Charlestown and Winchester, take cover now. Uh, go to the basement, go to an interior room, and if you're further east, okay, you can kind of use your noggin a little bit. If you're in Leesburg now, or out in Loudoun County, or out in Fauquier County, hey, they're going to get to you in about an hour and a half to two hours, so you might be able to take some precautions maybe you didn't have time to take before, but they're coming your way. At the very least, strong gusty winds, some hail, and some heavy rain. So hey, Top, that is the latest. Hey, Top, i got to ask you this. Besides the fact that I'm interested in this geography lesson you're giving to us city folks who may not know all these small town names you're throwing around, <laughs> we're seeing something you don't see all the time, which is storm after storm after storm. We get through one. Next thing you know, tornado warnings are just popping up again. What's going on out there? Well, I, I think I think it's two things, Derek. I think one is the we have a warm front that pushed through this morning, and that produced this first round. Now we have a cold front coming in from the west. It's going to be the second <coughs> round. And, and I think it probably bears repeating. We have this new fancy dual-pole radar that can actually change its pulse and give us a better idea of the vertical structure of the thunderstorm. And so it's going to... We had meetings about this at the Weather Service. It's going to release more tornado warnings than it has in the past that we would have just chalked up to severe storms. So just sort of keep that in mind. They're going to be a lot issued. Now, I don't want to take anything away from these warnings. I want everybody to take them seriously, especially up near Paw Paw. But, you know, for the, I think it's, it, it's a combination of, of almost a perfect storm. Two fronts going through, very, very in, in unstable air, and then, hey, we've got a pretty sensitive radar, too. Uh, thanks for keeping us up to date. Well, we talked about being stuck in traffic, and Robert Altman has the view all across our area. I know we need to know this. I don't know that we want to know it, though, Robert. I certainly know what nobody really wants to know, but we've had major problems throughout the afternoon. A lot of those coming in the form of flooding. Right now, flooding is blocking a portion of northbound I-95 right near the 11th Street Bridge. The accident we're seeing here is northbound I-95 at Edsel. For a while, that was blocking everything except for the left-hand lane. As you can tell, a lot of activity off to the right shoulder. The medics and fire equipment is now left. Only the police and the accident vehicles remain. Going back to some issues, the Adaloop right near 450 in Prince George's County. Two right lanes are blocked. Two left lanes actually blocked for flooding. Major delays all over the Beltway, as you can definitely imagine. Also along northbound 395 right near Washington Boulevard. Still very slow on that northbound side. At times, we've had 270 slow, basically from the Capitol Beltway up through Frederick County, and that remains to be problematic. Also very heavy traffic on 95 south of town heading up toward Baltimore. One thing I will say, northbound I-95 has been closed on and off north of White Marsh Boulevard. If you're traveling up to the Baltimore area, plan your trip, and you might want to delay it because things are very, very busy where storms are moving through in the White Marsh area north of Baltimore City. That's the latest from the Traffic Center. Now, back to you. Hey, Robert, very quickly, and I might have missed this. Forgive me if I'm asking you something you've already told us, but our Bruce LeShan is on the inner loop of the Beltway trying to get around to Chevrolet. He may end up on um, BW Parkway or some other way heading in towards uh, that metro station. How is that traffic holding up at this time of the evening? Right now, actually, that believe it or not, that's kind of the best part of the Beltway, uh, just going past uh, past 450 on the inner loop. Now, the outer loop, as I said, we do have two left lanes blocked with the uh, with the flooding conditions, but it's solid all over. But it does sort of break up just beyond Route 50 if you're heading on the inner loop, heading out toward that area over toward Chevrolet, and of course down toward the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. So he may actually get there, which would be at, nice. At some point. Thank you, Robert. You're yeah. welcome. We should also tell people that Amtrak is reporting that trains are not moving north. There really? apparently are trees down. Uh, and, and Jessica, are there also wires down on the tracks? It sounds like there may just trees on wires. Oh, so okay. that
that's not a good combination no. when the train is coming through. So if you were planning to take Amtrak, so much for that plan going from the air to the rail. Yeah, okay. not going to work wow. out right now. And I think we should They're remind working on folks it now. about the metro situation on the Orange Line, where there was also a tree down on the Orange Line that has affected service there. And they're talking about their bus being also been delayed because of the weather. Right. Let's take a look at a picture. Oh, here we have the picture that came in from Laura Sizemore on that train on the Orange Line headed out. I don't know if either one of you guys have that handy where that that was taken near the Deanwood, between the Deanwood and Chevrolet station. And that is what is affecting service there. Uh, Metro tells us both Orange and Blue Line delays as a result and buses delayed across the system. Let's take enough, another look at a photo. This is actually from Beltway Plaza in Greenbelt. This is from Ryan <coughs> Nomigal via Twitter. And you can see a funnel trial formation right there at the Beltway Plaza behind the marshals. And you can see it kind of moving down toward the ground, very clearly delineated. We've been getting photos all afternoon via WUSA9.com, our WUSA9 Facebook page, and Twitter as well. It's been quite a night, mm -hmm. and this is just round one. It sure is. Our Armando Troll has been out in some of the thick of it, out in Damascus, where we saw those flooded roads. I think it was Clarksburg near Bethesda <coughs> Church Road. Uh, you can't get through there at all anymore, Armando. That's right. Now, I was in the thick of it just a few minutes ago, but it's such a strange, stormy day. I'm in the thin of it now. Take a look. It stopped raining, but if you take a look at the skyline, look at how fast those clouds are moving. And if you could see behind me, there are some cloud formations that are moving in the opposite direction. Very, very strange indeed. But don't let this weather or the look of the weather for you because there are more storms coming this way. We're going to take a look at whether that bridge just a few miles down the road has flooded again or is in the process of flooding. It has been flooded less than an hour ago and folks are driving across it. We can't stress enough why people should not go over standing water. It's a miracle no one was washed away in that bridge because the, di the distance between the water and the edge of that bridge less than two feet. Very, very dangerous. And right now, we're just waiting to see when the next band of storms hits this portion of Montgomery County. And as you've been reporting, there are trees down all over the place. We also believe there may be power outages. We've seen a lot of cherry pictures placed in strategic locations up and down Bethesda Church Road. They're probably waiting until the final band of storms moves through the area later this evening so they can go out and assess the damage and then begin repairing it. Reporting live in Damascus, I'm Armando Truel. Back to you. All right, the calm in the middle of the various storms, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Armando. And our own top Absolutely. of shot has been all over this one mm -hmm. all evening long, and I guess he's got more storm reports and more tornado warnings for us. Yeah, we do. All the tornado warnings now to the west, and this is kind of uh, concerning because it's going to just march eastward as we go through the next uh, few hours. But we'll start now with the watch. So the tornado watch covers the entire metro area, okay, until... Uh, nine o'clock. Now we've got warnings within that. All right, we've got warnings, uh, you know, out to the west and around and in in Allegheny County and now south of Winchester. And those warnings go, it looks like, until um, about 6:45. So we're not done yet. We're just uh, not done with the, um, you know, with the next next batch. Now here is live Doppler 9000, <coughs> and you can see that the two lines of storms and. This line actually is kind of weakened, the one that's over 95 right now, which is kind of good. It's not as strong, not as heavy, but now we've got this other line that's really heavy, and we see a tremendous amount of energy and a little bit of wind shear out here up in the mountains. Can tornadoes occur in the mountains? Yes, they can. Uh, yes, they can. Uh, that's not out of the question. So if I were you, and if I lived in Warfordsburg or Piney Grove or Hancock, I would take cover. So even our friends now, you know, up in Bedford and Fulton and Franklin counties in, in Pennsylvania, you, you got to take cover because this storm uh, could have some, could have a little tornado with it, and certainly has some strong winds and some very very heavy rains with it. There is there is no doubt uh, about that. Now we'll talk about the lightning with the storms. You can see all the lightning with the storms now pushing through the immediate metro area, kind of up and down the I-95 corridor. And then you see the second line of storms now stretching from Cumberland, approaching Winchester back into uh, Harrisonburg. So uh, this is uh, big time, big time storms. And we're going to actually put on the uh, 
the storm reports now, and numerous reports of funnel clouds, okay, with these storms, uh, especially up to the north of us, all right, especially up into Frederick County, up around uh, Damascus and, and that area. Uh, we've got reports of tornadoes, of, of some trees down, funnel clouds. This is a, a funnel cloud, and this was in Jefferson uh, City in Frederick County, about 527. Uh, funnel cloud about 500 to 1,000 feet off the ground. And we talked about this earlier. It, it's not always the fact that the, that the damaging winds actually make it to the ground. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they kind of are at the very tops of the trees, which is actually good. You don't want them all the way to the ground. Another funnel cloud, no damage, but Damascus in Montgomery County about to 233. That was one of the earlier uh, storms that we saw. And now we see uh, in, uh, Char in Prince George's County, rather, we also have reports of a thunder wind damage around Clinton, and that was at about 504. So these storms, whether or not tornadic or not, they have strong winds and they have heavy rains and quite possibly some flash flooding. This is more wind damage around Middleburg and near Aldi in Loudoun County about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now these are just the ones that are in. We're going to more than likely see uh, another round of reports as we go through, you know, the next two or three hours because of the next round of storms. So again, these are the uh, warnings, okay? And we're and, and now we're gonna zoom in. I'll go back to uh, Doppler here, and you can uh, run the radar for me. To, uh, Andy, I'll go back to the key. This is the second line of storms, and tornado warnings in effect for, you know, Clark County, Virginia, Allegheny County, Maryland, Jefferson County, and West Virginia. And these have been prompted by the cold front that's pushing through to the east. Now, my, my big concern is, these are going to hold together, cross 81, and then get into our western suburbs, and could we kind of do it all over again. More than likely, when you get a cold front that rolls through, you get what we call little spinners. So we'll get a line of thunderstorms, and then we'll get little spinners that kind of spin up, and they're very, very small, not significant tornadoes at all, but they'll probably trigger the algorithm. We'll probably see more tornado warnings tonight, and they will produce you know, 40, 50, 60, maybe 70 mile per hour winds, and they can do some damage. So that's what I'm thinking what's gonna happen is we get this solid line with the cold front rolling through tonight. We'll get what we call little spinners along the front. And there could be quite a few of them. And at the very least, we're gonna get some pretty strong winds uh, as the front goes through. So uh, Winchester and front wall, you're under a tornado warning at this hour until 645. The good news is these storms have kind of quieted down. There's still some pretty good rains with them, really down 